had tabled a structure to DPSA that would actually assist us in this configuration, and that structure was approved. We then further worked with the staff to look at the allocation against uh, the factions. I must say, honorable members, that almost all members have actually been accommodated in the new structure. Those that are not affected, those that are not yet accommodated, linked to their functions, engagement is continuing to see how best they can be accommodated. It also answers to the question that was raised. There are indeed funded vacant posts that would actually allow us to absorb all the members of the two departments, unless, of course, chairpersons, some of the members may wish to exercise different options as individuals. In respect of the leadership of the administration, which another question that was asked, this matter, as we all know, is the matter that is handled by the DPSA and the presidency. The decisions of appointment of DG is actually a function of the presidency. Once this decision has been finalized in terms of our department, we will then advise. But we are continuing to work with the two DGs until such processes are finalized by the presidency. Chairperson, honorable members, in the questions raised, to the department in respect of the agri-parks and the district development model. I wish to indicate to persons that there is no contradiction between the two. The district development model is a nationwide program agreed to by government on how we must work as departments in the district with the three spheres of government. Agri-parks are actually an agricultural program that seeks to make sure that we pull the resources and attend to challenges in that specific district. Therefore, agri-parks will still continue. You will know, Chairpersons, that we are reviewing some of the agri-parks in the manner in which these were implemented. On the nine of those who are actually working with the African Development Bank, to see how best working with their expertise, we can improve some of these agri parts. Mm -hmm. In respect to legislation, Honorable Chairperson, as I come to a close, I wish to thank you once again with the members for encouraging us to approach the Constitutional Court in respect of the extension in the amendment of ULTRA. That extension has been received. The land court bill, which we mentioned to you last year, we did not put it in our legislative program because one of the members, the lead department in this is the Department of Justice. We mentioned to you because we as a direct participant, we yes, will give I, input I in our time. view on how this legislation can accommodate uh, our needs, particularly the work that has been done by the Land Claims Court. I also want to indicate, Chairperson, as I close, that with regards to the land bank, we are concerned as, your, concerned as yourselves. But as you know that the oversight of the bank currently is under the Ministry of Finance, we are engaging the CEO and the board of the bank together with Treasury to see how best the bank can be assisted to come out of the challenges that they are having, particularly the downgrade by one of the rating agencies. I do hope, Chairperson, that members of the department will be able to answer extensively on some of the questions that we have been raised. I would like again to say thank you very much to both of you and the members for affording us this opportunity to flag the issues in our strategic plan as well as our annual performance plan. Chairperson, as I close, I did make a request to you yesterday that I would leave the meeting briefly in order to attend the meeting of the AU STC, where we are having an inaugural meeting of the members of the task force 
as they are going to be commencing with their work. As soon as I finish, I will come back and hopefully we'll find the meeting not having been closed. But the two deputy ministers and the department is here to answer to some of the questions that may arise in my absence. Thank you very much, Chairpersons and members. Thank you, Honorable uh, Minister, for your input and the political uh, overview. Uh, we will uh, then uh, excuse you as uh, you had asked uh, to go and attend uh, your other engagements. Uh, honorable members, uh, let us proceed uh, with uh, the APPs and the strategic uh, uh, plan of the department uh, mm -hmm. in the absence of the minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. <coughs> Who will be leading the presentation? Chairperson, uh, should we proceed? Please proceed, uh, Baoshabane. Thank you, TG. Chairperson, should, should we yes, proceed? Yes, we, we can hear you. Please proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, the, our presentation is going to be in, in 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 four parts we will start with the strategic plan and then go into the app Ms. Pumeza, who is going to present the strategic plan and the app the chief land claims commissioner speak to problem four of restitution to speak to the financials uh, Ms. Uh, Rendani Sadiqi is going to speak to the <laughs> corporate support services section. Chairperson, we have received a number of questions from honorable members. We will attempt to respond to each one of them as we go along, and those that cannot be responded to directly Andrew, during the presentation. Chair, on the point of order. Chairperson? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm really sorry, but can we ask all members to please mute their phones? There's a lot of noise coming through, um, and it's not coming from the DG. Please. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Stain. Uh, I was actually uh, requesting that on our uh, WhatsApp group, but uh, thanks for bringing that uh, to our attention. Uh, we had noted it. Can we please have all uh, the microphones muted during the presentations uh, of uh, the department? And uh, we will then uh, be able to unmute them when we're going into the discussions and with further follow-up questions. In the interim, let us all uh, mute uh, the, uh, the microphones so that we can uh, be able to hear the presentations clearly. Uh, we will um, request DG that uh, you do a highly summarized uh, input on uh, the presentations so that uh, at least uh, by 10 to, uh, 10 to uh, 4, we can actually now 10 to 3, we can be able to uh, get into discussions. Proceed, DG. Thank you very much, Chair. I was saying uh, my last contribution was that uh, we will attempt to respond to the number of questions that are related to the strategic plan and the APP as, as we present. And then uh, the other questions will, will then respond to them directly. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Fasi. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Kubuza is going to lead us on the strategic plan and the APP. Good afternoon, Honourable Chair and Honourable Members. Um, my name is Pumezla Kupuza. I'll be presenting the Departmental Strat Plan and try to summarise as much as possible. I 
I'm just, I don't have control over the slide, Chair. Thank you. Proceed. You have no control over the slide. Chair, our presentation for today, uh, the five-year strat plan focuses on outlining our constitutional mandate, our strategic focus over the next five years, the key economic indicators that informed our strategy, how we are going to measure our impact, as well as our contribution to government priorities and, out and outcomes. The alignment with the National Development Plan, the, the 2020 to 2024 medium-term strategic, strategic framework, as well as that of the 2020 State of the Nation Address. We also look at how we'll measure our outcomes uh, very quickly and also our APP, which I think is the crux of today's discussion. We also look at the budget allocation as well as our macro and organizational structure, which informs our capacity to deliver. Our mandate is, draw, is derived from uh, Section 24, Sections 25, and as well as 27 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. I'm not going to go into the vision which uh, and the mission as well as the values, but we have crafted those uh, for members to also have a look at. I've already mentioned that our strategy is informed by the triple crisis, which is inequality, poverty, as well as unemployment. I think that most of us are familiar with the challenges facing the country in that regard. And therefore, this is basically what uh, our, our strategy for the next five years seeks to respond to these issues that are highlighted here. We can move to the next slide, please. Again, I've indicated the macroeconomic environment, which is challenging and has therefore required the department to respond to it. Our focus for the next five years will be on the development of a, a vibrant um, economy as well as a, with the contribution of our agriculture. We also want to focus on the seven outcomes which will impact, which will also derive where we derive our impact statement, which is an effective land reform that ensures food security, inclusive economic growth, as well as, uh, as well as spatial transformation. Again, I've already indicated that, that our contribution is also informed by the, by the government's seven priorities. I think we're all familiar with those. I won't go into them. Okay, move to the next slide. I've already touched on the seven outcomes. We'll deal with the seven outcomes when we go into the presentations of the actual strat plan. The strat plan chair is, is, is also um, informed by the seven outcomes. They improved governance and service excellence, increased production in the agricultural sector, enhanced biosecurity as well as effective disaster reduction. Move to the next slide. The redress and equitable access to land and, pro and producer support integrated and inclusive rural economy, as well as an increased market access and maintenance of existing markets. So basically, these are the outcomes that we wish to uh, achieve at the end of the next five years. And also uh, linked to those outcomes are the departmental programs that will then also be, um, that will also be the vehicle to achieving these outcomes. I will go into detail with the programs when I go into the APP chair. Okay, I'm not going to go into these ones. It's just so it just the, this the following slide. I think it's three slides. They just basically show how our outcomes and uh, and so forth are linked to the MTSF outcomes as well as the SONA priorities. Okay, Chair, so this is the annual performance plan as well. I would like us to pay greater attention. Uh, we have uh, six programs as the uh, as the department, which all contribute to the five to the seven outcomes that we've already outlined. The first program is administration, which deals with improved governance as well as service excellence. So our focus in this regard is in terms of compliance as well as in terms of co accountability of public funds. Um, we can move to the next slide. The second program is agricultural production, health food safety, natural resources, as well as disaster management. This is again an area of focus for the next five years. 
It contributes, this program contributes to increased production in the agricultural sector. We have a number of outputs that, uh, that, that seek to, um, to achieve this specific outcome. We are looking at indigenous and animal uh, conservation projects, the implementation of, um, of, of, of such, also the number of animal improvement schemes uh, with, for prioritized value, uh, value chain commodities. We can move on to the next one. We are also looking at developing the cannabis master plan and having it implemented in this financial year. The number of provinces with, delene with delineated uh, protected agricultural um, areas, we targeting two projects this financial year, as well as the area of 10,000 um, hectares, uh, which should be cultivated fields uh, change from conventional to conservation agriculture. Still with the same program, looking at an outcome of enhanced biosecurity as well as effective disaster risk reductions. Uh, we're looking at pest control and uh, pest uh, risk surveillances, which should be conducted. And we're looking at a target of three this year. The animal diseases and uh, risk surveillances should be con uh, that must also be conducted. Uh, and also the percentage of eligible veterinarians uh, which are placed under the compulsory community service program that deals, uh, so there we're focusing on animal health and biosecurity. We also look at um, the number of new agricultural inputs, uh, which uh, must be registered in this year. Provincial biosecurity coordination structures, which will be established in the nine provinces. The number of laboratories, which will be accredited. We're looking at targeting one lab laboratory. Uh, export uh, protocols for the phytosanitary requirements are also required. And there we're looking at uh, a certification of such, which should also improve our ex the quality of our exports. We move to the next slide. Uh, the implementation of climate change also becomes important in our space. So we're looking at uh, imp implementing a climate change adaptation and mitigation plan as well as uh, also making ensuring that we have number of uh, we have 120 smallholder producers which are capacitated on crop as well as uh, crop suitability and climate change uh, program we're targeting 120 this year on food security and uh, land reform and restitution restitution which is also a core area of our mandate uh, we look at the National Policy Comprehensive Producer Development Support, um, uh, support uh, which will be implemented this year. The number of smallholder and medium scale producers, which will be supported through the blended finance uh, scheme. We are targeting 150 there. The number of farms which are supported through the land development support program, we are targeting 200 this year across the provinces. The number of the red meat producers, which would also be supported, the target is, is 9,000 in that regard. Chair, we're also looking at graduates, which we wish to place in the sector for capacity building, and we will be monitoring uh, the, the placement thereof. The number of the students which will be enrolled in agricultural training institutes, we are targeting 1,100 this year. Uh, we're also looking at uh, transferring uh, 21 tranca areas. Hectares that should be allocated uh, for state land. We have a target of 525,330. A question was raised when, uh, I think, when the president presented the State of the Nation address, the target was 700,000. The, the difference there, which is 107, if I'm not mistaken, the 107,000 was already transferred, has already been allocated. So we, that's why you see the figure of 525. And we also have a provincial breakdown in terms of where these hectares are also allocated. We also look at the number of claims settled. Uh, the commissioner will talk to the settlement of claims when she presents the strategy for the commission. Again, on, on land, and, uh, land uh, reform and restitution, we also look at number of hectares that will be strategically located uh, that we wish to acquire. We are targeting 50,000 and also disaggregating the hectares to the various found, um, targeted groups, which is female youth and those that were previous that are previously um, that sorry that those people with disabilities. Uh, we also have a breakdown in terms of that, which can be made available in due course. The number of labour tenants applications completed. 
um, I think that we also have a breakdown in terms of where those labor tenants currently lie. The number of skills development opportunities provided, we're looking into the rural development program, um, which, 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 which uh, seeks to achieve the outcome on integrated and inclusive rural, uh, on an inclusive rural economy, talking to chapter six of the national development plan. Uh, there, we wish to skill. Uh, we, we wish to uh, target 7,591 uh, skills development opportunities to the various uh, beneficiaries that we come across in the different um, rural areas. The number of job opportunities that will be created in rural development initiatives, which is 5,652, as well as infrastructure projects that we wish to complete in this year, 130 of those. On program five, which is economic development, uh, trade and marketing, a lot of emphasis around this program is on policy development. It's also on supporting cooperatives, also on ensuring that we review the agricultural, um, the marketing of agricultural products, uh, as well as agropreneurs that will be capacitated on food uh, manufacturing standards. The trade agreements also that will be implemented, we, we are targeting uh, to implement those and a report on such will be will be available on the six trade agreements that we um, that that we've targeted for the for the current financial year. Can we conclude? Again, I've indicated part? that a lot of this deals with the multilateral multilateral agreements, bilateral agreements, as well as trade agreements that will be negotiated in this financial year. Uh, report stated status reports on such will be provided, Chair, for the current financial year. Move to the next slide. Um, again, the farmer production support units, which is the FPSUs, um, are made functional. Our target for the financial year is 24, as well as rural enterprises that will be supported. We're targeting 265 of those chains. Okay, can we conclude on, on this program part? six, land administration, contributing to outcome two, which is spatial transformation and effective and efficient land administration. Uh, we are targeting the approval of the land administration legislative framework, the national land information systems uh, that must be developed, the electronic disk registration system, phase one thereof, which must be uh, developed, which must also be developed. The deeds amendment bill uh, will also be drafted in the current financial year. We are also targeting district recordal projects, um, uh, piloting those in three sites. Um, the number of national spatial development uh, frameworks, uh, spatial action areas, implemented plans uh, developed. We're targeting five this financial year. The number of district development plans or Operation Kaulesa will also be updated, targeting the 23 uh, development plans um, updated. The number of communal property associations for the year, we're targeting 477 that we wish to support so that they're compliant with legislation. That is the end of the, of, of the annual uh, performance plan and I will hand over to the CFO chair to present the budget expenditure. Thank you. Can Good afternoon, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable Members, Colleagues, uh, Honorable Deputy Ministers. I will touch base with the budget that we've got uh, as a department. I will only look at the 2020-21 financial year. Under Please administration, we've time. got a 2.7 uh, billion. And then under agricultural production, health, food safety, natural resource and disaster management we've got a 3.2 billion and then under a uh, food security we've got a 8.1 billion and then under a uh, rural development we've got a 1 billion and then under economic trade economic development trade and marketing we've got a uh, less than a, a billion there and then also under a uh, land administration, we've got under a billion. And I also want to highlight uh, two points that uh, were raised by members. The one is around the increase in uh, budget for office accommodation. I just want to highlight that uh, 
in 2009 when a department of agriculture met uh, merged with forestry and also fisheries there was no budget allocation for office accommodation so we had to reprioritize prioritize the budget and then in this current year we had to increase the budget to take cognizance of that and also the other item that the the members asked around was the issue of a uh, the invoicing 30 days invoicing i, I want to acknowledge that uh, we have put a uh, controls in place to say that uh, if all your documents are in place we would pay you even within a uh, 15 days but if your your documents are not uh, in order then we would uh, send that back to you and would not include that in our calculation of 30 days can we move to the next slide please and then the next slide is just a pie chart of uh, the allocations that i've spoken about and then the other slide please the bulk of the budgets that we've got goes to core business and then the rest go to support and organizational cost thank you teacher thank you chair thank you chair mr Dibu. Uh, afternoon, uh, Chair and uh, members, uh, Deputy Minister, DGs and uh, DDGs and colleagues, good afternoon. I will just uh, quickly go through the uh, presentation on, can you just go to the next slide, please? I'll go through to the structure presentation. Can we assist uh, Mamou Sadiki with the presentation? Chair, we are trying to attend to that now. Okay. 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 We'll proceed, uh, with, with the presentation since we can't hear uh, Mr. Tiki. We'll proceed on our side. Okay. Thank you, Tiki. Um, Chair, I will also touch on the macro structure of the department, which shows our capacity to um, ever. And go to the slides. Ah, thank you. Okay. Chair, this is the structure of the new Department of Agricultural Rural Development and Land Reform. Um, we, this, it's actually the macro structure, so it's up to level, it's from DG to level, um, to level 13, which is senior management. Um, we took cognizance of the fact of the NMOC process, which was introduced by the DPSA, indicates that we must have a leaner structure. So part of our merging with the Department of Agriculture, Forestries and Fisheries, um, you will see that the numbers are still quite large at this stage because we, there's still a lot of reconfiguration that must all be done. 
our department, as are presented in the strat in the strategy, is divided into um, into six programs. However, at uh, at DDG level, we have um, DDGs responsible that could also be in cross cutting uh, uh, cross cutting programs. Um, I won't go into details, but also to just highlight that. Uh, uh, sorry, 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 can can Miss Kebuza unmute her mic, and Miss Sadiki, Miss Sadiki must mute her mic. Miss Kebuza, can you please unmute your mic? Ms. Kabuza? I don't think she can hear us. Maybe we need to send her a message. Okay. 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 Can we proceed in the interim with the presentation? She's muted, uh, Chair. The IT, the chat option is closed, so we no, can't chair, can't. Only, only the committee secretary can unmute her. Chairperson, that, that was the last part of the presentation. The Chief Land Claims Commissioner will be presenting uh, at four o'clock. Um, what yes. is remaining, Chairperson, are the other questions that have been uh, uh, asked uh, to the department by the members of the committee. Um, I'm not sure how the chair proposes that we proceed on that, but we have got responses. OK. okay. Uh, that is exactly what we were targeting to get to uh, about DG. Uh, uh, according uh, to time, uh, time uh, let us, uh, let us uh, give you uh, then, uh, 15 minutes to dispense with the questions that were sent to you so that honorable members can then do follow up questions and we can engage in a discussion with the remaining time. Proceed. Thank you, Chairperson. I'll start with the CFO. Thank you, Tichi. The question on uh, office accommodation, I think I've already addressed it. And also the one on 30 days, uh, I've also addressed it. But I will also go to the question on the job funds. Uh, I, I think the question was, how far are we? The, the closing date for the applications was the 24th of January 2020. Uh, we received 725 applications and they have been assessed by the department. A total of 162 applications met the pre-assessment requirements and were further assessed by commodity experts within the department as well as the commodity organizations. And out of the 162 applications, 87 met all the requirements and site inspections were undertaken on this to conclude on the technical due diligence. The outcome of the site inspection resulted in 67 applications qualifying for the second level of financial due diligence, which is done by the land bank. Hence, uh, 67 applications were submitted to the Land Bank for financial due diligence. I'll move to the next uh, question. Uh, the, there was a question on disaster management. Uh, the question uh, centered around whether the department has uh, budgeted for for disaster management and uh, the departments do not normally uh, budget for disasters 
as all uh, disasters are responded via the National Disaster Management Center at COCTA. A disaster can be declared provincially or national, but the financial approval is through the National Disaster Management Center. And if funds are made available for disaster management, management the funds go through the adjustment estimate of expenditure process. And then also uh, underneath that particular question, there was a question around uh, where is the 1.7 billion coming from? Uh, I want to correct, I think the minister mentioned that it was a 1.2 billion and that, that 1.2 billion is coming from the old Department of Rural Development and Land Reform budget of, of 2019-20. And an application was made to the national treasurer to use the amount for the COVID-19 intervention. Then there was a question that was raised by Honorable Mundwedi about uh, the, the, the budget has reduced. How will it affect uh, the performance of the department? I just want to highlight that there's a difference of 1 billion from 2019 to 20 to 20, 2021. And the, part of it is due to a 282 million relating to the Marine Living Resource Fund, which is no longer part of the department. And also there was a reduction in the budget of the agricultural land holding account. DG, I, I think I'll stop there. I've touched base with all the questions. Can you respond? including the land uh, redistribution bill uh, in the uh, APP. Uh, you would know that the uh, land redistribution bill needs a lot of consultation. <clears throat> uh, we are still busy in the process uh, of consultation. I said land redistribution bill. Land, uh, The regulation of land holding bill, which you were indicating that it was introduced in 2017, and up to date we have not moved on it. And it's correct, and the reason is that um, it needs a whole lot of consulting because there were contentious uh, issues uh, within the policy, issues uh, such as ownership of land by foreigners, uh, the ceilings on amounts and the extent of land an individual can own a situation without compensation. So hence, we have not been able to finalize this bill. Uh, you also uh, asked us a uh, reason uh, or what guarantee do we have that we would be able to put through the communal land tenure bill uh, through this uh, a, a, a period and we we answered that we are not able to guarantee you uh, on on whether we can finalize this bill because it also required the consultations outside this uh, 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 with the stakeholders and we need to be uh, 
able to um, consult widely on this bill. Um, you asked us on the timelines that we should provide the timelines for uh, when the bills would be uh, in Parliament. And I have included the timeline there uh, on my answers. I don't know whether I should go through them because it's a bit uh, longer considering the time, but we have sent the timelines on all those bills that will be by Parliament this reporting during this uh, re uh, year under that we are reporting on. On the issues of the structure, um, we must just indicate that we have the macro structure that was approved already in November 2020. And we have finalized on the issues of uh, appointing the DDGs. The, mini ex uh, the minister has already spoken about the um, issues uh, regarding the accounting officers. Uh, we are in the process of uh, consulting with the uh, SMS members, senior members, um, consulting them uh, with a view to finalize their appointments. Uh, we were delayed by the abrupt or the, the COVID-19 uh, lockdowns, which by now we should have finalized the uh, uh, consultations with the SMS members. We have now had to redo the project plans because we are not longer able to, to, to meet with them, but we will have to consult individually, uh, which we are in the pro process of doing currently. Um, we have finalized the realignment. We have finalized, we are busy uh, now with uh, the fit for paper structure that we are also planning on. Um, there was a question on um, uh, my, my uh, chairperson, you will have to um, pardon me. I'm reading on my book because my computer is frozen. I'm not able to access the questions as, as they are. So I had jotted down the answers on my book before. Um, you spoke about the issues of the uh, vacancies. We have uh, 945 vacancies, uh, which puts the vacancy rate at 30, uh, 13%. Uh, but what the assessment that we have done so far uh, with the supernumerary staff or those that are duplicated because you know administration for both uh, departments would have been duplicated. We have about 42 of the SMSs that are supernumerary. However, at SMS level, we have 95 per vacant posts. So we are confident that the, all those that are supernumerary will be able to place them. Uh, properly within the 95 that are vacant and funded. We are still doing the assessment and the consultations uh, with the affected staff. Then we would place them and uh, bring in the issue of training to ensure that we properly uh, capacitate them. Um, I think uh, that's, that's all that I had to attend to. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Did you hear my story? Did you hear my story? Chairperson, while we wait for did you hear my story? There will be questions that uh, will be responded to by the Chief Land Claims Commissioner at the next session. Um, let, let me deal with the other question. There's a question on the inclusive rural economy. What are the plans that the department has put in place in the medium term strategic framework? Uh, Chairperson, the strategic plan takes precisely that question of inclusive rural economy into account. But in addition to that, we are finalizing the, the, the agriculture and agro processing and master plan where we have identified quite a number of commodities across uh, the board 
uh, including in, in the former homelands where there is agricultural land that is lying fallow, where there are defunct irrigation schemes, which we, would, we are targeting to revive. And um, we are also um, working with the provincial departments of agriculture to finalize the plan. We are going to be consulting uh, with the provinces in the next few weeks uh, to finalize the plan. We intend uh, rolling out uh, the agriculture and agro-processing master plan at least uh, in the in the next uh, two to three months uh, going going forward. This this is this this question is also related to the economic transformation question and job creation. Uh, it is aligned to the strategic plan and the the agriculture and agro-processing master plan. Indeed, the agriculture and agro-processing master plan research we have uh, we've done, it is showing us what is the percentage contribution in terms of output of black farmers in various uh, uh, commodities. Uh, citrus being the lowest, livestock being the highest, where there is the highest number of participation by black, commercial, by black farmers uh, in, the, in the red meat sector. So we are looking at each one of those sectors and we, are, we have designed specific interventions to respond to each and every one of those. Uh, there's a question uh, related to the finalization of the, the National uh, Special Development Framework. Uh, the question is, what is the department planning uh, to do, um, doing uh, in terms of ensuring that communal land is audited? We, we have been embarking on an extensive exercise of surveying all uh, state land, including com com uh, communal land in the former homelands. There are some parts of the of the uh, of the surveying that is still outstanding uh, in the provinces of Limpopo and and the Eastern Cape, but the exercise uh, is is ongoing. Um, the minister has responded to the question about whether we still have agri parks or whether they've been replaced by the the district development model. I will not uh, uh, respond to that question. The, the the other question is about what is what informs the comprehensive rural development strategy in the match department. It is part and parcel of the mandate of the department as well, Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. And as we are saying, we continue to implement the agri parks. We will continue through the district development model, focus in the development of social infrastructure, economic infrastructure in rural areas, but Let's, also primarily focusing uh, at what the, the production I mean, in terms of the, uh, agricultural uh, output uh, in the former homelands, also putting uh, processing uh, infrastructure in those areas. The question is, with the match Someone department, why do we need DG? consultants? We, can, we, have, we have a number of functions that cannot be performed by the department. For instance, the, we have got an audit function. Uh, internal audit outsources the work that they are doing. We need uh, external uh, auditors to come in. We need forensic investigators. Uh, we need other forms of consultants to perform work that we cannot perform as a department. Um, there's a question about the impact of the, uh, the, the financial uh, crisis of challenges that are faced by the land bank. Um, this has not uh, impacted uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, on, on the blended finance since we had stopped uh, the blended finance uh, late last year for purposes of reviewing it and uh, some of the money that had been withdrawn uh, that had been transferred to the land bank to the tune of about 800 million rand was withdrawn and was reprioritized and brought back to the to the department and um, part of the money that we are using uh, for 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 the stimulus package uh, of which 600 million has now been redirected to the uh, to the COVID-19 emergency intervention, where we have targeted small holder farmers and uh, communal farmers.
Chairperson, the, the, there's a question about the, the, the department planning to commercialize uh, 2,500 farmers uh, over the next five years. And uh, the, the view is that the, the department has failed to do so uh, uh, over uh, since 2014. The information at our disposal is that there's quite a number of farmers that we have uh, assisted through the proactive land acquisition where we've acquired land, we've allocated land to them, and there's quite a number of them that have gone to the commercial level. Indeed, there's quite a number of others, of course, that have not been able to reach that level. So we do believe that it is possible uh, to, to, to achieve the target of 250,000. Uh, there's a question about the CPAs. There are 1,650 1, CPAs that are currently registered. The question, there's a question about how does the department uh, plan to assist the sugarcane farmers as they are, they are not mentioned in the strategic plan. Uh, honorable members, uh, we, we have assisted uh, over 11,000 small, uh, small holder farmers in, in the sugarcane uh, industry, but there's also a, 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 a master plan for the sugar industry. Our department is working together with the DTI in terms of supporting uh, the small holder farmers and the sugarcane farmers uh, in, in line with the in line with the master plan that has been uh, uh, developed. The other question is: What systems have we put in place to ensure that farmers are assisted uh, going into the future, given uh, uh, COVID-19? Chairperson, uh, we, we we intend to increase uh, the capacity of the production farmer support units, and uh, we intend to to make sure that at least 27 of them, uh, production farmer support units are fully functional and operational uh, during, this fin uh, during this financial year as part of our support uh, towards smallholder farmers. But there is also a related question to this to say, what other measures are we going to put in place to support farmers over and above the 1.2 billion rand that was, uh, that were, was recently approved? We are working on uh, developing uh, of a second window of applications where we are looking at other categories of farmers, including smallholder uh, sugarcane farmers, uh, including uh, uh, wool, uh, wool growers, and uh, other smallholder farmers in the former homelands and uh, in, in the townships, particularly to support uh, uh, household uh, food gardens with inputs uh, such as seeds, uh, fertilizer, and, and the like. The department is not involved in providing any uh, uh, food parcels. We are providing inputs to assist communities to plant and produce some food for themselves uh, instead of providing uh, uh, food parcels. Can we conclude, DG? I think the, 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 the CF, uh, Rendani, uh, Renda, DDG Rendani Satik has responded to the question of the risk distribution bill. The only other question issue that I can add here is that the, 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 the constitutional review process uh, with regard to Section 25 of the Constitution, its outcome will also have a direct bearing on the content and form of a future land redistribution bill because it must, among other things, the redistribution bill give effect to whatever will be the outcomes, uh, the outcome of the constitutional review process. The our strategic plan is is directly linked to 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 the to the SONA and the medium term uh, strategic framework. Chairperson, there's a question which um, there are questions that are relating to what is the potential impact of COVID-19 on the budget of the department? Chairperson, we, we have received indications, uh, actually all national departments have received indications uh, from National Treasury that we will have to reprioritize our budgets. Um, in some instances, they have even intimated that there may be further budget cuts in terms of the budgets uh, that they have allocated to us. 
Um, we have re-looked at our budget, we have reprioritized it, but we do not yet have an indication that uh, how much money they will be taking, if any, from the, from the current budget allocation of the department. The, the, there's a question from Honorable Stain in terms of what criteria was used to select uh, to, 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 to come up with this intervention for COVID-19 that was targeting smallholder farmers. We are saying smallholder farmers, not just subsistence farmers. We're saying smallholder farmers and communal farmers. And some of those who are farming on communal land have got a bigger land on which they are farming but we are also cognizant that they, they are those that do not make the turnover of 50 million or 50,000 rand per annum. That is why in the sub, we subsequently reviewed the qualification criteria to say they sh it should be a, a turnover of about 20,000 per annum. So we have since reviewed that. Uh, in that regard, Chairperson, we have received uh, 55,000 applications uh, from uh, uh, the time we, we opened the window of applications uh, on the 8th of April up until the 22nd of April. So we are currently evaluating those applications for purposes of dispersing the funds to those farmers. Okay, thank you, As I said, we are looking, once we have concluded the, this current uh, window where we are uh, evaluating the, the, 50, the 55,000 applications, we will soon uh, consider to open the second window for, 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 an, for other categories uh, of, of farmers. The, there's a question about when are we going to finalize, fa trans, transfer the Chankra land. There is some 1.3 million hectares of Chankra land. We have put, in terms of our APP, we had intended that all of this land will be transferred to the communities by the end of this financial year. But obviously with COVID-19, uh, there being also other travel restrictions, it could well be that we may not be able to transfer all the 1.3 million hectares of Trankra land, but it remains our commitment and our plan to do so. Okay. There's a question about a database of labor tenants and uh, other Thank claims, you. the Chief Land Claims Commissioner will, will, will address the question of uh, the, the database of land claimants. Indeed, also the department it, request, does have uh, a database of, of, of land claims, uh, of, of, of labor yeah. tenant claims. We have submitted the database to the Special Master of Labor Tenants as appointed by the, by the, by the Land Claims Court. As the, as the members are aware, the Special Master was appointed in December and is in the process uh, of submitting a plan uh, to, to, to the Land Claims Court, uh, which will show that the, the target of 500 uh, that you are targeting in our APP is in line with the target uh, that will be in the plan of the Special Master. Chairperson will, will, will reserve the questions that are directed to the ITP uh, to the ITP to respond to them. DG, can we stop uh, here with the further Let me check engagement? If DDG Ramasoti has joined us. DDG? No, no. Not DDG. Please uh, wait. We are looking at the time and we will now enable DDG, uh, members to engage with uh, the input that has been made. Honorable uh, members, I will just uh, call out your names uh, uh, one by one and I'll be assisted by uh, the chairperson in the NCOP, Honorable Modise. Are you there, chairperson? Honorable Modise? Sure. Hello. Can you identify? Yes. Can yes, you uh, call out a member in the NCOP to pose a question on the presentations thus far? Yes, Chair, I'll do that, uh, Chair. I will start with Honorable Matibet to ask a question for now. Honorable okay. Matibet. And Honorable Wenya. Honorable Wenya. Oh, yes, Comrade. Uh, Honorable Wenya, uh, you will follow by Honorable Matibet. Jefferson Mlindinan would want to ask a question as well. 
Hello? Chairperson, okay. you want to ask a question? Yes. Honorable uh, members, let, let us assist. The chairperson in the NCOP will call out two names. You ask your questions. I will then call out two names to ask their questions. And we will uh, take down at least uh, uh, 10 questions for the first round. Yes. So go ahead, uh, Honorable Modisa. Yes, Honorable Mgwenya, you will follow by Honorable Matibe. Honorable Mgwenya. Honorable Mgwenya. Thank you, Chairperson. Yes. Yes, yes Chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Honorable Mgwenya. Okay. Chairperson, I've got two questions. I've got two questions. Uh, my question, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'm listening. Thank you for the presentation. Chairperson, my question is, uh, is what are the plans, activities of the department with regard to the commitment to the sustainable development goals. Question chair is based on the fact that parliament to ensure that to the SDG are reflected in the department plan, policy and budget. The second question chair is I'm asking from the minister. The minister made a comment last year during the debate on policy and budget vote in parliament on Namusa judgment. What is the progress hence far in addressing her commitment on Namusa judgment and the plans to deal with the 1998 large claim that uh, she reported to not have been finalized. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, thanks, Honorable uh, Nguenya. Uh, next, Honorable uh, Matibe. Uh, th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I've got two questions. The other one will ask in the in the next session. The sure. the the first one is uh, on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, uh, which which our country is a signatory. What is our state of readiness uh, as the department in that regard, taking into account the COVID nineteen? The second question, Chair, is that when when we we had this pandemic, the COVID-19, uh, agriculture was already hit by drought. And how is the department uh, responding to two disasters, uh, drought as well as the the, the pandemic uh, at, at the same time? Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Modise. Yes, uh, yes. Can we have uh, Honorable uh, Kape, followed by Honorable Stay? Um, uh, thanks, Chair. Am I audible enough? Yes, ma'am. Yes, go ahead. All right. Uh, Chair, my follow-up is on the agri-parks. Slide 13 of the strategic plan indicates that uh, the department is targeting nine agri-parks for the next five years with a baseline of zero. Now, if we have to make an impact as a department on rural economies, we're coming a long way with agri-parks for the past five years. What is the reason again of limiting them to nine, which says it's one probably per province? And initially, when they were conceptualized, it was supposed to be one agri park in every district. Now, if for this five years, we only target nine, how are we going to make, we need about 25 years. What are the reasons of just limiting them to nine for the next five years? Two is the outcome base number six, rural development. Chair, I'm struggling to see the targets 
for the CRDP. Can the department also submit the number of infrastructure targeted projects that are 130? The breakdown according to provinces so that we are able to align and see if these are the targets for CRDPs. My last question, Chair, is on the tenure security. Can I have clarity? Because I don't see any. How is the department intending to deal with farm evictions? Is there provision for legal services that was promised? It is not clear on that one. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Stay. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, thank you for the presentations, Chair. Uh, some of my questions was asked, so I'll go to others. Um, my question is regarding the budget and especially the response um, from the DG and also what I'm hearing that we might even have more uh, budget cuts. So my concern is that uh, food security and land reform is now in one uh, department or one uh, program. Uh, we have already cut on the, the number of hectares that will be transferred during uh, this uh, financial year. And the DG spoke about an increase of or opening up again for small scale farmers to apply for more funding. Now, many of our farmers have been going through a massive drought. Uh, we have been dealing with the foot and mouth disease. And I, I wasn't happy or clear about the answer regarding the uh, budget for um, disasters. I think we need to have a proper plan in our department. Our role as ensuring food security for the country must be escalated. We need to have a proper disaster plan in place to cover all of these areas. I don't think, Chairperson, we must just um, sit and say, oh, but it's, it falls under another department. We have to have a proper plan. We must come up with a, with a presentation to Treasury to look at our plans. So, and as a, a follow up, also, I, I, I'm not sure if the CFO can maybe put in writing the answer on, on the, the um, uh, offices. Um, at that time, the connection was very bad and I couldn't hear the answer. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Thank you, uh, Honorable Modise. Yes, uh, uh, Honorable Nana. Honorable Nana, are you still there? Yes, I'm here, Chair. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, Chairperson, the first one is, is on slide 37. It related to, to the budget. I noted that 83% of the entire budget of the department will be going to organi organizational support, and only 17 will go to core business. I would want the department to elaborate further. What do they mean about organizational support? Does this mean salaries, rental, uh, uh, rental amounts for offices, stationery, and, and other overheads? And the 17% is only meant for what they are employed to do. That's the first question, sir. The second issue, Chairperson, as you will know, I'm in the NCOP and I'm from the Eastern Cape. Naturally, in the NCOP, we are uh, provincially biased. I had, I had the DG mentioning that to date, they have 1,650 CPAs registered. It took me a bad chairperson. Uh, I would have expected that we would be given some sort of a, of, of a breakdown as to how many of these uh, CPAs are in a particular province and which are those CPAs. I'm asking this thing, chairperson, because in the Eastern Cape, as you probably know, uh, in the area of Totumvaba, there is about 88 farms that make uh, Waichu area. And about 1,500 people live on those farms. They have been for the last three years or so asking government 
or a simple thing that they want their CPA to be registered. And people have been dragging their feet on this or that. And suddenly, they want land to be transferred to them as owners so that they can work, so that they can work on the land. Now, I would want to know from the department, what is their plan with relation to the people of Kwaki in the Eastern Cape? We have been pleading with you guys, but very clearly, they are, they are, their pleas have been falling on deaf ears. Thank you, Chef. Thanks, uh, Honorable Nana. Uh, uh, Honorable Smith? Honorable Smith? Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable Chair, um, my first question would be, um, if we look at corporate South Africa today, um, everybody's busy restructuring, reprioritizing the strat strategies and financial plans to adjust to the current uh, economic climate and the change that is happening throughout the world. Now, um, I, 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 I fail to see that the department actually is adjusting its strategy and uh, uh, long term, uh, medium to long term financial plan to uh, adapt uh, to the current changes that's taking place. I mean, the way of how things are going to be done in the future is about to change and is busy changing as we speak. Um, so I want to know. Um, where in the strategic plan um, is the changes to adapt to the challenges that's coming uh, together with, with uh, the, the, the disaster of COVID-19 and the economic uh, um, aftermath that's, that is going to follow? The second question I have, Chair, is uh, I see that there's an allocation of 100 million rand towards the land bank. And um, as I heard in reports and seen uh, 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 recently that the land bank is in financial trouble. Uh, so I want to understand how is that going to be handled? Because if we have an entity that is going to get 100 million red for uh, uh, assisting in disaster and they themselves are within a disaster, um, how is that going to work? And how is the department going to make sure uh, that those uh, that money don't fall through the cracks. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Smith. Uh, Chair Ma Mandela. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mudis. Uh, can we have Honorable Montuedi? Honorable Montuedi. Th Thank you very much, Chair. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. My question will actually, the first one would be on the input made by the minister. The minister said that they are working with Treasury to see how best can they assist the situation at Land Bank. Now, I want to ask this question to the department to say, how difficult it is for them to play a, a, to actually play oversight over land bank even though land bank does most because the primary function of land bank is agriculture related now how difficult it is for them to play oversight over land bank whereas land bank then reports to national treasury don't they see this as a as a challenge that should actually be addressed in future chair the next question chair will be on the on the jobs fund application, correctly so, applications were closed on the end of January this year. I want to check in terms of the provincial breakdown for those applications, because in most instances, you find that uh, some of the requirements of these applications that our government does actually do uh, exclude uh, uh, emerging black uh, farmers that would actually want to take advantage of, advantage of them. So I just wanted the provincial breakdown in terms of the 727 applications received and the final 67 applications received to say these are the provincial breakdowns. And those that could not make it, has the department actually written to those individuals who applied and explained to them these are the, actually the, what, what were the mistakes that they made so that next time they should actually 
they do better when they take advantage of some of these applications, Chair. The other question is, DG, the issue on blended finance, it has been suspended for some time uh, due to the review. We received two conflicting explanations as to why the blended finance was suspended. I think I raised that in the last meeting. I'm not going to raise it today, but I just want to check, DG, how soon can you actually start uh, 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 making this program of the blended finance because farmers would want to take advantage of the blended finance. How soon can you make that? How soon are you going to that program? How soon is it coming back uh, from suspension? The last question, Chair, is on the COVID-19 applications. The 55,000 received applications. I just want to check from the DG and the team to say the intention thereof was to assist farmers to plant for the winter season. And the winter season has started, especially on areas where there's a, it's under irrigation. It has started now. May is the time for winter season. Uh, how soon are you going to conclude those? So are, are those uh, applications going to assist farmers for this season? Or are we going to see a delay where approvals would be made in June, July, where the season has already started, Chair? Uh, I think from my side, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Montuedi. Honorable Priet. Thank you, Chairperson. Maybe let's start out and, and touch on what one of our, my colleagues has said, um, specifically relating to drought and what the CFO said that disaster management handles it differently. Um, I would like to point him to a letter that um, that was sent to the department from the Select Committee on Appropriations dated 29 January, where the, the department was actually instructed um, to within 60 days um, compile a report specifically as to, and I'm just trying to get there, um, to get to the resolution 6.4, where it specifically states that the department should come um, should come forward and should specifically have a budget and and have a plan in terms of draft relief and draft relief funding and how the department is going to to uh, take that into account and moving forward how they're going to do it it's also specifically taking into account that on the 4th of march chair um, a national state of disaster was declared and, and we're all familiar with who declares it and what that process is. But specifically taking into account that a question was put to the department, I think we need to know because as the as the, the uh, government gazette says as well, um, that it, it is necessary to deal with this and a national disaster was declared to assist and protect the public, to provide re relief, protect property, prevent and combat disruption, and dealing with the destructive and other effects of the disaster. And I think as the department have continuously said, food security is our number one priority. And uh, I would like to know from the department, what are we doing and can we actually have that report? I um, have believe from my member in the NCOP that they have not yet received that and he made a follow up on Monday in that regard. Um, the first presenter spoke to uh, spoke about creating a vibrant economy for us. And I would like to know from the department, what has COVID-19, the virus, what has the economical impact been on agriculture, specifically taking into account that wine and wool exports for the, the first level five of lockdown was not able to continue? What is the economical loss that we are facing in terms, um, in terms of this? And then, Chair, um, maybe just to speak as well to the DG mentioned at the end that we will have a new window opening for um, for support for farmers. Now, I would like to know from the department what is the um, what is the movement or what is the, the the idea behind supporting farmers who who already have essential who are producing essential goods because they have been able to to work straight through from the start of lockdown from the 26th of March, but we're seeing other we're seeing other instances, we're seeing other farmers, bee farmers, wool farmers, wine farmers, who are, are negatively impacted, taking into account the drought that we've just, that, that I've just mentioned as well. I see no clear relief to those farmers who are not essential services and who are really struggling to actually um, to actually make ends meet at the end. And I know of many farmers who either commit suicide or then have to declare bankruptcy because of this. And I would lastly like to know, Chair, is the department considering relief to commercial farmers as, as part of the COVID-19 relief efforts? Thank you, Chair. 
Honorable uh, members, uh, due to time, uh, can we hand over to uh, the DG and the deputy ministers uh, that are with us to uh, give responses? And then if we still have time after their responses, we can uh, give the other members an opportunity. Uh, DG? Uh, th thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I don't know if you, the questions that relate to the commissions, we should deal with them now or defer them to the next session, Chair. Um, I will I will start with the CFO. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Teacher. The, the, there was a comment that came from uh, Honorable Stain, and she, she indicated that she, she did not uh, understand the response that I, I, I gave on uh, disaster management. My, my comment was that uh, departments are not allowed to budget for disaster management. I think there's one clause that says you can only budget for 2% uh, out of your whole budget. And uh, as such, the department w waits for the, either the province or the national department, uh, department to specify that we've got a, a, a disaster. And then we approach the National Disaster Management uh, Center. And then if the disaster management uh, is declared and there are funds made available, the the funds are allocated under the adjustment estimate uh, of expenditure around uh, November of every year. Then there was a question around uh, the organizational costs that uh, we've got. I think the organizational costs account for only 8%. And what we have under that, uh, it's a uh, We've got bank charges around there. We've got bursaries for employees. We've got computer services. We also have uh, fees for audit committee members and board members, uh, legal services, uh, running costs for vehicles, and also operating list costs and uh, office accommodation, cleaning, security, and municipal services. And also in there, we've got rates and taxes and they only account for for eight percent and then uh, there was a a request for a breakdown for uh, the applications for the job funds uh, I, I would i would urge that uh, we be allowed to give a written response on that uh, at the moment i don't have it in front of me thanks DG. thank you very much did you Thank you very much, um, DG. Um, honorable members, uh, honorable chair, there were a few uh, questions I'll just relate we to. can hear you, DG. Uh, um, can you hear me, chair? Again. Please, yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Thank you very much. Um, the, the issues that were raised um, around the protocols. Uh, last year we had uh, 27 protocols that we had to adhere to. This year we are doing 41 uh, protocols, so there is a, a, a raised in terms of the protocols that we are doing. The second aspect related to the work that we are doing with the provinces on the disease surveillance. Yes, there is a plan in terms of dealing with disease surveillance. The only challenge that we are having that honorable members are aware of are the issues around the, the chain of uh, command in terms of provincial services, especially veterinary services, where in other provinces they are even broken down to municipal level. And as and when there is reprioritization, most of the time the issues that have got to be sacrificed are vet issues. And we are currently dealing with that through provincial structures. We are going to be resurrecting provincial structures that will specifically target issues that we have got to deal with surveillance. 
and also other structures that have got to deal with uh, district level uh, planning when it comes to veterinary services. The issues that were raised by Honorable Briet uh, in terms of how the impact of COVID-19 has done in terms of the, the broader um, commodities that were not part of the essentials, work is being done on those. But the issue that is at hand is that there are three fundamental issues in terms of COVID. Countries closed their borders uh, in terms of COVID-19. Secondly, they also put restrictions in terms of exports. And then that had an impact in terms of the demand uh, worldwide in terms of agricultural products. When it comes to those that were not part of the essentials like wool and cotton, um, there is an open um, regulation now that allows for the exports. And as soon as we can quantify the cost that has been done in the 30 or so days that were done during the regulations, we will avail them. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, DG. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The, the question from Honorable Trape about the nine agri-parks. Indeed, the, the number of uh, the original the original number of agri-parks was revised, taking into account the, 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 the budget available. Uh, but we are now working in partnership with the African Development Bank, because initially, the idea was that about 70% of ownership and the funding of agri-parks is going to be funded from the fiscus. Uh, the African Development Bank did a review of the work that we had done, and they have come and suggested that uh, we need to mobilize private sector to come on board, to come and co-invest in the, in the, in the, in the agri-parks, they, they are currently now doing detailed work around how they can uh, assist us. They have actually given us uh, 20 million US dollars uh, as part of this feasibility to say, how can we bring a uh, private sector on board? How can we bring other investment into, into, into the space of the agri-parks? So that work is, uh, is in progress. Honorable Club will provide the, the breakdown uh, of the infrastructure projects that are in the APP, but they are not uh, about the, 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 the CRTP. They are various uh, agriculture projects, as, as you will see when we provide the, the breakdown in writing. Uh, the, there's a question about farm evictions. Jefferson, we have been running as a department the the land rights management facility. Our minister and the minister of justice have agreed that the function of the the the, the land rights management facility that are currently residing in the department are now going to be transferred to Legal Aid South Africa. Obviously, we'll have to make the budget available for them to continue with that work. So we are now trying to finalize that arrangement as part of our response to responding to evictions. Um, Honorable Nana, uh, we will provide the breakdown of the CPAs as, as requested uh, across all, all, the, all the nine provinces. Uh, Honorable Schmidt, uh, we, we, are just, we are presenting this budget and the strategy as was tabled. Uh, we will have to follow a due process in terms of revising the strategic plan. There is a lot of work that is happening, but the process to be followed to revise an APP and a strategic plan, it is something that we will have to consider if National Treasury is, is requires us to revise our budget. Honorable, Honorable Montuedi, the oversight over the, the land bank from our side as a department is going to be difficult because the shareholder minister there is the Minister of Treasury. We are, however, working very closely with the land bank. Uh, in fact, we, we are reviewing a number of uh, interventions that we can execute together. We are very mindful of the challenges that they are facing, and uh, given that we have already transferred 100 million rand to them, 
So we are in discussion with the CEO of the land bank to make sure that that money doesn't go down the drain, but it, it serves the purpose for which it was uh, uh, meant. The, we will provide also the, the breakdown uh, of the applications uh, as, as you have requested. You've also asked when, how soon are we going to uh, get the blended finance uh, rolling? We are unlikely to do so very soon with the land bank, given the challenges that they are having. They are reviewing their business model. I'm not too sure whether in the re in, in the re in reviewing their business model, they would still be uh, willing to uh, to have a blended finance model with us. But what we are doing, uh, we are at an advanced stage, stage in, in negotiations with APSA Bank and FNB, where we are exploring uh, the possibility of having a blended finance together with those two commercial banks. We do hope that we can expand it further. Uh, we, we have made quite tremendous progress progress and they have been quite responsive. So we are likely to have uh, the blended finance uh, uh, going uh, pretty soon. Similarly, from our side as a department, we are planning to reintroduce the grants. Honorable members will recall that currently the only land acquisition in instrument that we are using, we are using the proactive land acquisition strategy where the state acquires the land, the state keeps the title deed, and we lease uh, the, the, the land for 30 years to the farmers. The minister has directed that we should reintroduce the, the title deeds, uh, the, the, sorry, the grants, so that we can acquire land and transfer it outright to those uh, that have applied. Uh, in some instances, it will be a 100% grant, just like um, with, with restitution, uh, with labor tenants and farm dwellers, but other categories of smallholder in medium scale and large scale farmers, they we would be expecting that there would be some uh, loan uh, component that, that, that will accompany that. And um, we will be transferring land in full title to those who will be successful. Um, we have not done a full assessment, Honorable Briet, on the impact of COVID-19 on the economy. You may have seen uh, over the weekend, uh, there are some comments, some economists are saying the, 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 the cost to the economy uh, to date is about 20 billion rand per day and so on. You've seen the Minister of uh, Trade and Industry disputing that information. So in the agricultural sector, we have not done a, a similar assessment uh, in terms of what has been the economic impact. Obviously, agriculture may not be affected as much as other sectors in, in the economy are going to be affected because some sectors, food security was classified as an essential service. So some operations in agriculture continued. Of course, you've got the impact of drought there was a little bit of a challenge with regard to exports, but that is now open and all other, I mean, the whole sector is, is now open. I think I will leave the question, I will uh, respectfully delegate to my deputy ministers the question about uh, whether the department is considering relief uh, to commercial farmers. Uh, preferably, Honorable Squatcha can answer that question. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, uh, TG. Uh, Honorable Deputy Minister Squatcha. Mshoni Chua Squatcha. The Deputy Minister doesn't seem to be with us. Deputy Minister Squatcha. Yeah, you can speak. You don't need to whisper. Uh, 
Mr. Kirkarret, assist is Honorable Squatcha with us, the Deputy Minister. Chairperson, I see he's on the list of, of um, people that are on the meeting, um, but I see that his microphone is muted. Okay, thanks, uh, Honorable Briard. Can we have assistance Maybe in that regard? Someone must wake him up, Chair. He's probably resting. Out of order, Honorable Montuedi. You out of order. Uh, please uh, let us uh, take uh, the work of uh, the committee uh, very seriously. Uh, DM, if uh, that is. Uh, all the questions and uh, we don't have a response from uh, the deputy minister can we request that, that is uh, done um, in writing back uh, to the committee and i would in this juncture request that all the remaining questions uh, be uh, all the questions that have been answered to be sent to us in writing as well uh, Honorable Modise, do you want to have the last bite uh, before uh, we close? We have 10 minutes remaining. Chairperson, sorry, uh, just a request. Uh, the, the, the questions to be answered, they should be sent to both committees, please. Absolutely. They will be sent to the Secretariat, and the Secretariat will make sure that all Honorable Members both in the National Assembly as well as in the National Council of Provinces, have access to the answers. Honorable Modise. No, thanks, Chairperson. Um, I would like to urge the department to send the response because yesterday we sent the, a lot of questions to the department, but none of them are, have they have uh, answered. And then the other questions is Today, when the members were raising questions, for example, the Honorable Matibe raised a question, uh, the department didn't respond it. But I'll request the department to send them in writing. Okay. And I have uh, Honorable uh, Masati and uh, Honorable Mbabama. Say what about me? Uh, let's uh, be mindful, we only have eight minutes left. We still have another session, honorable members. We will be taking hands again in the next session. But I'm just looking at time and I was affording honorable Modisa to utilize the time. And uh, she's uh, fine on her side, so I'm just honorable Bibi. So what about me? Uh, I have indicated, honorable members, we're still going to a second session. The more you are saying what about me, I am right. clear it that we will be taking those that haven't asked questions, will be prioritized in the next session. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can we have these three, uh, please? Okay, thank you, Chair. Okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, no, Chair, uh, my part will be, I would like to ask a question regarding the bills. Like some of the bills and policies plan to be processed, such as uh, the communal tenure bill and the regulations of agriculture land holdings bill. They have been in the pipeline since 2017 or even longer, but has been shifted every year. What guarantee is there that they will be processed in 2020 and 2021? And also, should the department provide timeframes for processing these bills, as well as an update on progress made to all the bills and policies listed in the APP for processing in 2020 and 2021. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Mbabama, Honorable Mashati.
Thank you, Chair. Um, I have two questions and they are follow-up questions. Uh, on the consultants, could the C CFO uh, kindly tell us what the amount is that is budgeted for the consultants? And uh, could we have a breakdown of the expenditure per consultant that they uh, feel would be necessary going forward? That's the first question. And then the second question, Chair, um, is directed to the to the DG, uh, whereby I would like to know. I think um, Lindy Nana also asked the question. This is a follow up. When will the Guayu people get their land? When will the Guayu issue be resolved? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Masati. Mm -hmm. Is Honorable Masati there? Mm. Okay, DG, uh, in the absence of uh, Honorable Masati, let me uh, just sponsor uh, one on my side, uh, which uh, speaks to uh, the government's commitment for the current uh, MTSF is to eradicate fruitless and wasteful expenditure. What measures does the department have in place to ensure that fruitless and wasteful expenditure is eradicated throughout the budget vote by 2024, particularly in light of disasters and the country's fiscal constraints and economic outlook. Let's hand over to you then, TG, so we can conclude this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, perhaps one question that uh, Honorable Muntwedi asked was, which we did not respond to, among others, is when are we going to finalize the adjudication of the applications? We, we hope to finalize the adjudication of the COVID-19 uh, application for smallholder farmers by the end of this week, so that uh, next week we start dispersing the funds to the farmers to procure the necessary inputs. Chairperson, on the Comrade Land Tenure Bill, uh, as, as, as members may be aware, we have made quite uh, great strides in terms of the Communal Land Tenure Bill. Um, what we had intended to do was to engage in a process of consultation on this bill. Uh, one of the things we we're going to be host doing was to host a, a, a land a tenure summit uh, with the traditional leaders uh, sometime in June. But with the COVID-19, uh, we have had to shelve many of our plans. We are also going to be having provincial consultation workshops, but we have had to put all those things uh, in the back burner. Uh, similarly, uh, most of the legislation, including the regulation of land holdings, the bill, the bill as a draft is already available in the department, but we can't be taking it forward in the next uh, to the next level to the clusters, to cabinet, and so on, because we need to have regular, uh, to have uh, robust engagements around that process. Honorable uh, Babama, we, the CFO will provide the breakdown on the total budget set aside for consultants per, per classification. Uh, on the Kwaju matter, I would request that uh, I be afforded an opportunity to get a full report from the from the team in the department, uh, because I do not wish to just respond off the cuff uh, on this question. I would get the the full report and will respond in writing to the committee. Chairperson, on the last question of on the eradication of the fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Chairperson, as you saw in under program one, we have made a commitment as a department to be 100% compliant with all the prescripts that regulate public finances. That includes doing our utmost best to pay to pay a service providers within 30 days, 
but also to make sure that there is no fruitless and wasteful expenditure. Where, where it does okay, as, 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 as it sometimes does, the department will take the necessary corrective measures where fruitless waste and wasteful expenditure has occurred. Thank you very much. Thank you, TG. Honorable members, uh, I will request that this uh, uh, period uh, we take a comfort break and adjourn this first session. We will uh, therefore be requesting DG that uh, the department uh, sends us uh, all uh, the answers that they have provided to uh, the questions posed by honorable members. We have uh, uh, seen and identified that some of the questions that were sent have not uh, uh, been answered to with the absence of DDG uh, Ramasodi. So we would like to ensure that all those questions are responded to and sent to the secretariat in writing. And uh, we will uh, then uh, uh, request the uh, honorable uh, members uh, to have a comfort break. And we will resume again uh, at uh, 10 past four. Thank you. Thank you.